40. So if someone was offering stock at market and there was only a bid of $240 a share, that's where Apple opened, or that's where Apple traded. So that's, that's kind of the flash crash. Why did the traders pull their bids? Because they saw all this global stability increase. Um, it's actually a little more complicated than that. I don't know what's going on there. It's actually a little bit more complicated than that. Uh, there is speculation. I don't have all the, the, you know, the nuts and bolts of it. But it looks like somebody that all these things in the stock markets are all also influenced by the futures market. And so it looks like somebody sold off a bunch of futures when they saw this this Greek writing. They went short a bunch of futures, and that in effect caused the traders when they saw the futures dropping, they pulled their bids, and that caused the market to drop. I don't. I honestly don't have all the mechanics of it. I haven't looked at the reports, but in effect, what happened was people saw all the writing in Greece. They pulled their bids, and the market dropped. I guess my knowledge isn't extensive enough, enough to know mm -hmm. like all the thoughts that would go on in these investors' heads to tie it to like Greece, but. That's okay. Well, I, don't, I don't need to know that now. I'm no, sure. no, it's okay. I mean, it's risk, it's fear, it's uncertainty. Mm -hmm. You know, if you think that Greece is going to go bankrupt, um, that's going to have an effect throughout Europe. It's going to have effect, an effect throughout the United States. Europe is a big export market for the United States. So if Greece goes bankrupt and that causes Europe to go into a recession, then there are going to be less demand. There's going to be less demand for U.S. exports to Europe. In other words, U.S. you know, Im Europe importing is going to import less stuff from the United States, so business is going to slow down in the United States. Profits are going to slow down in the United States, so stock prices are going to slow are going to come down in the United States. So there is a kind of a chain reaction to these things. All right. So assuming there is an elimination of mm -hmm. the dollar as a world reserve currency, mm -hmm. could you give us a schedule of events that? could take place, um, maybe speculate on inflation in America, and maybe some benchmarks we can look for? I mean, I think we can have double-digit inflation at least. During the 70s, we had inflation that I think at one point got up to 14% a year. Um, I think we're headed back to that, maybe more, I don't know, but something like double digits. Um, the Chinese have already come out. Last year, they came out and said that the US dollar you know, being the center of the world's monetary system um, needs to change. Um, they uh, put out a proposal about S like something called SDRs, which are basically currencies, right. currency that's issued by the IMF that itself is built on currencies. <coughs> so presumably, the dollar would be one of a basket of currencies, and the international trade and commodities would be priced in SDRs instead of US dollars. I think that's a possibility. Um, I think it's a bad idea because you're building a fiat currency on top of fiat currencies. It's just gonna make things even worse, but I have a feeling that might be where we're headed. Ideally, I think we should go back to the gold standard. I don't see that. <coughs> the only way we get back to the gold standard, you know, the US is inflating our currency. If the rest of the world follows us over the cliff, I think the inflation is going to be the worst here, regardless. Do we do we, we have, have another option time. for a sound currency? I'm sorry. Do we have another option instead of a gold yeah. standard to create a sound currency? You really? know, in theory, you can fix the amount of currency. The same commodity. Or, yeah. I'm sorry. But yeah, or another commodity. <coughs> that, uh, you know, in theory, you don't you don't have to tie it to gold. I mean, personally. I view gold as being one tool in, a, in a, an investment toolbox um, or an economic toolbox, but you don't have to tie your currency to gold. If you fix the amount of currency and you say, we're just not going to print up any more currency, that's it. Yeah. You don't have to tie it to anything, in theory. Um, practically speaking, everybody's always inflated, uh, attempted to inflate. <coughs> So you end up tying it to something like gold. Yep. If uh, if you stop printing money in order to try to prevent inflation, um, so you reduce the the currency supply, mm -hmm. you would expect interest rates to go up, right? Um. Well, when interest rates go up, you're gonna, in theory, you're gonna reduce the demand for loans. So. 
inflation is not just pure money in the economy, it's money in credit. So you can reduce the amount of, um, <coughs> amount of money that's in the economy by reducing the amount of loans that's in the economy by raising interest rates. So yes, you typically raise interest rates. So do you think the, the raise in interest rates that would be associated if hypothetically you were to stop um, you know, the, the printing of money we see in the United States, do you think the impact on the economy of that would be worse than the eventual uh, crisis of inflation that you were talking about? <coughs> well, I don't think they're mutually exclusive. I think if you, you know, what Volcker did in the late 70s or early 80s is he raised interest rates in order to curb inflation. Mm -hmm. And the raising of interest rates <coughs> um, curbed inflation because people were then holding on to the money because they were getting a real rate of return instead of feeling like they had to spend the money. <coughs> Simultaneously, higher interest rates reduced the amount of loans that were, were being made in the economy. And so, <coughs> again, you saw less, con less money circulating. So I'm not, I'm not, I guess maybe I'm not fully well, understanding. I guess the I'm saying like you're, you're basically, you're speculating that the policy of the United States of just printing money the way we do, that's going to lead to a, an inflationary crisis eventually, mm -hmm. right? So if you were to, if the Fed were to raise interest rates in order to prevent that inflation, right? that raise in interest rates that's traditionally seen as inhibitory to economic growth. Mm -hmm. So would that, um, <coughs> would that inhibition or would that, would that stifle economic growth, would that be worse than the result <coughs> of the damage to the economy from what might happen as a result of inflation later? In other words, if the Fed raised interest rates and we went into recession mm -hmm. versus Inflating away the debt. Yeah. What's worse? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Essentially. <coughs> I mean, it, I guess it depends on your point of view. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're if you are someone who thinks that it's okay for the government to inflate away its obligations, then you say, hey, inflation is great. You know, we're gonna we're gonna run double digit inflation. Let's say ten percent for seven years. That doubles the nominal size of the economy, which means it reduces the nominal burden of debt, or the real burden of debt, by 50%, you know, that's great, no problem. I happen to think that that is a very destructive thing to do to an economy. Um, I think that, again, it's a, it's a philosophical question. I think that sound money, you know, honest money, um, is the right way to run an economy. And I think that just like an individual or a business, you know, when an individual or a business gets into debt, they can try to pay back their debts, <clears throat> or they can declare bankruptcy. I think it's much more honest to declare bankruptcy and say, look, we can't pay back our debts. Um, <coughs> I think we are too far gone to try and take a Volcker-style increase in, in, uh, in interest rates. I don't, I just, I mean, we are barely keeping our economy alive right now with zero percent interest rates. If we were to raise interest rates right now um, without declaring bankruptcy, I think it would just be devastating. I mean, it would it would cause a depression that is worse than bankruptcy. So, to me, the right way, the right thing to do right now is to declare bankruptcy. And how, how does a government declare bankruptcy? Is that just a default on <coughs> our? Our debts to China and so forth. Basically, you come out and you say, "I can't pay back this money that I owe you. This four hundred billion dollars a year that I'm paying in interest, I can't pay." Um, you have to cut spending right away. And again, this is what happened in Greece last year. Um, you know, declaring bankruptcy is just like the same way it would be for an individual or a business. It would be saying, "I have, I have debts that exceed my assets and my ability to pay back money." So. I have to cut my spending, I have to restructure my obligations, pay back at least some of the money that I owe. You know, one of the biggest things that we have in this country, bigger than the funded debt, the funded debt is only 14 trillion. The unfunded liabilities of Social Security and Medicare <coughs> are something like 75 trillion, it might be more, it might be 100 trillion, I mean the numbers are just ridiculous.